All right, hello everyone, and welcome back to BattleTech Advanced 3062 and our Irby Derby campaign. Today we're testing out something interesting. I have two units of Phalanx Battle Armor, the Battle Armor design uh, fielded and, well, created by House Merrick and the Free Worlds League. It looks like it's pretty slow, but moves at 10 initiative, and I'm curious what we can get done. Of course, I have two brand new pilots in there, um, Bobsled and Chancellor, because well, should they die, it's no great loss, but uh, hopefully we can make it through, and hopefully it will prove an interesting tool. So on scanners we have a 75 ton mech, a 70 ton mech, and another 75 ton mech, and nothing else currently on scanners, so we are going to, in time-honored tradition, uh, reserve down. Okay, something that we can't see, just moved to 7. Uh, maybe a medium mech, something with a good pilot. A little bit hard to tell, they probably... That might be in a secondary lance. It's uh, something we'll have to figure out for ourselves as the battle goes on. Okay, so there's a 65 tonner, probably two lances. Then I think um, I think that was a pause for the AI moving previously. So uh, one thing that's interesting is that it looks like right now that the Phalanx battle armor can walk farther than it can sprint, and that's usually because of a supercharger. Um, I really, I'm not entirely sure. Uh, yeah, so we'll have to see. Um, okay, just to get things started, let's go ahead and take our Irby Lamb up on the avionics and use that wonderful mobility <clears throat> to scout the battlefield. See what we can see. Okay, so there's an Ion, there's an Orion, there's a Marauder 3D. And a Crusader. I do like the Crusaders. I think the split LRM SRM missile build can be very uh, capable, certainly a very flexible design. Uh, let's see. I think um, what I'm most scared of would be either. And then Orion has a deadly missile build. It's a lot of SRM 4s. But the heavy PPCs are truly terrifying. I think I don't want any of those to hit, so let's go ahead and shoot into the ion. And now, one thing that I need to become more familiar with is how to properly use battle armor, because I've read that there are VTOLs, vertical takeoff and landing, um, well, planes, basically. Uh, I think they're modeled as, as tanks with avionics, but I could be wrong about that, to allow fast deployment, but as it stands, um, the small amount of movement range we have available to us seems like a nice way to die. Um, maybe that's why there are stealth suit or other sorts of uh, battle armors as well. But, I mean, two evasion pips is not exactly phenomenal. And we're going to turn on our guns. 77% chance to hit is very nice. I want to see what that's coming from. Gunnery 3, size delta. So it's mostly from size delta. And there's a deficit from max range. Now, the ammunition amount is a little confusing because, well, we have four SRM4s, only eight total ammunition. I'm curious if we'll run out in one go, or if this is a per unit model sort of thing. So I have two, uh, well, two volleys, I suppose, with the SRM4s. Let's go ahead and see what we can do. Which is little mini Gauss rifles. Lots of SRMs coming in to back that up. I do like the look of that. Huh. Well, I suppose we'll have to see. Um, I think we're going to come up this way into the forest with the other phalanx. And... I mean, it's certainly good additional firepower. I, I never have any complaints about that. And it looks like the size delta will always give these guys a decent firing solution, if not a perfect one. Probably should have sensor locked the ion previously. I really want those heavy PPCs to not be able to find a target. Um, let's see what we can do. Okay, so we can get a shot on there, but let me see what I can get with the Centurion first. Okay, that is a blocked shot. That is not. So let's go here. I'm a little bit worried standing close to the uh, battle armor. I also don't really know what happens. Um, so the way these work, at least that I know of, is that uh, each unit each one of the suits sort of has its own armor and health values that are like mini max, right? So it's entirely possible one of them dies and the other one does not. Oh, 
what happens to my pilot? Um, if I lose a suit, did he miss? No, okay, he hit. It just was uh, it didn't show it. Um, if I lose a suit, does my pilot take an injury? Because, well, he was in a different suit. Uh, so how would that work? Right, I'm, I'm sure I can find it on the uh, BCA 3062 wiki. I just really hadn't looked because I've never really been all that interested in uh, fielding battle armor. I just figured, you know what, I've avoided it. Uh, but it is a feature, and let's see if it's a good one. So we've done a fair bit of damage to the ion, um, but not... I mean, we haven't taken anything offline. Uh, if we look at the ion's armor, it still has half-ish on the couple armor pieces that we've damaged. Even more than that in some cases, I think what we might want to do is try and do some flanking. The area be lamb. A little bit of dangerous positioning here, but we'll come in and shoot up the back of this Orion. I'm hoping we can get an ammunition explosion. Alright, no luck there. Um, we did pound through rear armor, but not quite enough uh, to reach that internal structure, so no joy. And now if we take a look at... okay, yeah, so this is this is what I thought it meant. Um, it looks like that ammunition bin represents um, both units. Yeah, because our SRM ammunition is down to four, that implies I have a second volley per suit, and our um, mini gauss ammunition, I suppose. Uh, King David Gauss Rifle ammunition is down to 9, so that fired 1 from 10 down to 9. I mean, that's fine. That's It's a lot of Gauss Rifle ammunition, and it just means that we can save some of the short-range pieces for uh, better hit chances than the 60% that we had available to us. I'm moving up just a little bit. Um, I want to see if we can burn through the ion before he has a chance to shoot, but I'm suspecting that may not be possible. So... We'll have to see. Um, okay, so we have two moving at five. If we get the Marauder up, yeah, let's do this. Double binary laser, uh, well, easy for me to say. Double binary laser has a chance of being able to knock this thing out of commission. Um, although, 32 damage resist is pretty good. It's not too shabby there. Cut off most of our damage. Still, that was a pretty good salvo. Yeah, down to 7 on the front CT. I run the Dervish up here, and then there's definitely a second Lance as well, because these guys aren't moving even though they're on priority 5, so that means somebody else somewhere is. Let's go up here. If we can bust through it with some SRM fire, we might be able to get a couple engine crits or other sorts of things like that. Structure exposed. Yep, core crit, but nothing else, and that ion is still alive. Okay. I think their brain is messing with my computer performance as well. I mean, maybe I should turn down the graphics a little bit between this one and the next one. <laughs> ah, I think it can always help, right? So we're going to come up through the Centurion, and hopefully we'll show off the use of cluster rounds off of the LBX AC-10. Let's see what we can do here. No, they didn't actually get a kill. It looks like most of that went to uh, something other than that central torso. A little bit disappointing. Yeah, only maybe one or two hits there on the CT. Oof. Okay. Ah, <laughs> jeez. Um, squad injured. No, oh, it's okay. So pilot injury. So squad injury is a pilot injury. Mm, that sucks. This is what I meant by we have them a little bit too close to our other units. I think I actually do want to move this guy just out of danger. Um, but the interesting thing to note is that, I mean, these two are fine. That other one took a hit, it just took a PPC shot right to the face. Alright. Well, we'll have to have a fair number of pil uh, pilots if we plan to use these in a lot of situations, because, you know, losing a single suit and getting a pilot injury versus losing a single uh, piece of a mech and not even necessarily getting a pilot injury are two very different things. Um, let's see. So some of the battle armors that have jump jets are appearing to be a much more attractive option for sheer mobility's sake. Uh, might have to take a look at some of those. And here comes the Orion, which I was not able to kill. 
That's that rack two and the missiles opening up. Actually not great accuracy. I was more afraid of that mech than I maybe should have been. But let's see what those have double heavy PPCs have to say about this. Okay, so they do both miss. <laughs> those both look like hits, but nope, they were they were in fact uh, not on target. <sighs> okay, so it's like the Phalanx Battle Armor up oh, somewhere I can get a shot. Can I not? Can I not get a shot anywhere? You're kidding me. Okay, well let's just get you up here then. Have a shot max turn. Uh, both of these pilots do have shielded stance, 50% flat and damage reduction, um, as well as gaining an initiative. It's, this is an emergency. They're right next to some big stompy, and it's not good. Uh, but I don't think that will necessarily be required right now. We're going to do a risky maneuver here. I want this Orion dead, and I think the Ergy Lamb can do it. So, give me a dead map, please. No, we shot it. Okay. If you're right behind the guy, don't shoot him in his front armor selections on his leg, please. You're killing me, Smalls. Look at that. 40 damage into that. That would've been enough to kill, potentially. Oh, now I have an Irby Lamb with two evasion pips up at the front, and it is all my fault. <laughs> uh, if you ever have that voice in the back of your head that says, Hey, don't do this. Listen to it. It's a good voice. It's it's there to keep you from making stupid mistakes like the one that I have just conceived of. So we're gonna run over on this side, work on the mechs that we've already been working on a little bit here. I want this ion dead. He should be dead. In fact he's not, it's because he's lucky. Which is good enough for him, I guess. And he's still not dead. Okay, so I can I can shoot the centurion at him. Can I get more of a yeah. So I'm doing this to deny the Marauder and the Crusader a good shot on the Centurion, just by virtue of where I'm standing. And finally, we've killed the Ion. Okay. Well, oh. potentially uh, could get a double heatsink kit from that. Five salvageable parts. Oh, we didn't destroy the CT, we just crowded out the engine. Okay. I mean, hey, fair. That works. Um, now let's reserve down to five. Can I get the Marauder? No, can't get a rear shot on him. There, can I with the Dervish? No. Those are my last two mechs that I have available to me. Looks like we're gonna play the reserve down game. Right, the two chipmunks. No, 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 you go first. No, 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 you go first. And all of that. Um, you know what? Let's put a hurt on this Crusader. Because I think if I come up here with Dervish, pop Battle Lord just for fun, and load in on him, I might be able to rip him off. Well, I'm apparently overestimating the power of my own lance at the moment. And they definitely do have backup units, that's now confirmed. With an LRM rack coming in from off screen. Okay, so let's get up here. And controversial choice. We're going to shoot in at that Crusader again. Reason being, we've already done so much work to the rear of that Orion over on our side, that it'd be a bit of a shame to waste it by trying to pound through the front. Um, and we haven't really done damage to the CT yet either, so that's not really a viable way of saying, oh, well, at least you know, we, can, we can get through with minimal uh, internal structure to have to chew through. So that was actually an LRM hit to the cockpit, but our pilots now have better gut scores and are able to shrug that off. Our Marauder taking an absolute beating from their Marauder, which is a little unfortunate. We're going to have to pop the 20% uh, damage resistance on the next turn, I think, in order to stay alive, happy, well, healthy. Because this uh, this Marauder can take a beating, but it can't do that forever. It will begin losing pieces, particularly when most of those PPCs pounded directly into our CT. And we have all of these missiles coming to back it up. Although, not a full salvo there, a little bit of a saving grace for us, it would appear. Uh, and we do have some options on our turn, so Rack 2 unjammed uh, un for them. But that's really not the end of the world. What we're going to do is we're going to take the Urban Mech around the back end on this side. We're going to put those lasers directly at this uh, already very injured rear CT if we can. Okay, not enough. We got some damage on it though, just not enough. Uh, but that's better than nothing. And now what we'll do is we'll take the Irby Lamb and again make a little bit of a risky move because they don't really seem to be caring too much about it right now. 
Uh, we didn't pay for it last time, at least, which is an excellent way of judging my kid. Of course, and if this streaks fire, we should at least get some of this room. Yeah, so that Orion's down, that's our second kill. And, uh, I mean, this is on a lance of, of all heavy mechs. It's not like we're um, fighting against the JV team here. Good pilots, too, I think. Yeah, tactician, defender, and that's just what's left, not even what's gone before. That looks like an ER large laser. Yeah, it's a little bit interesting the reflections you can get on the water in this game. I actually think they're quite, uh, quite pretty, but that's just me. Um, can I get the battle armor? I mean, this is just so painfully slow, and I understand that, right? It's not, it's not a big mech. It's meant for city fighting, things like that. It's just so painfully slow. We're gonna try and get him up on a ridge so we can shoot out with King David. Um, Gauss rifles. I mean, we can't do what the AI can and uh, ambush out of a building <laughs> just to start off combat. So our options with those things are more limited um, than what they could be. That's just how the game works. It's really like if we could ambush the AI as well, it would just it would go from a challenging fight to just straight up unfair. Unfortunately, that does mean that there are tactics available to the AI that just don't work as well uh, for us as they do for them. So, um, okay, let's get the Centurion moving. I want to pop over on this side, and we're going to pound into the already damaged Crusader. Slow him down, moving on four. And we can go in the cluster, I think it'll definitely rip off the arm. Yep, okay, right arm gone. We've taken about half of his missiles offline, uh, which works for me. That's good. That's what we want. And a fair, fair amount of damage to the right leg as well, so we could potentially be knocking him over pretty soon. Uh, but that was Ridgehound. He was the one I was supposed to pop the damage resist for our entire lance with, and I completely forgot, per usual. Uh, so now what we're going to do is let's see how much armor you have on your... Uh, this is unlikely to kill but I'll take unlikely over, not gonna happen. Um, okay, I can't melee him, that's fair. Alright, give me an alpha strike. Okay, we got through some of the rear armor because that's a heat sink destroyed. At least one, potentially two. They are getting some rear fire on us with the LRMs, but that was a risk that I was willing to take. Uh, may regret it, but at least that should give us... Okay, so we have... We have to move this battle armor. Um, it's throwing off my turn tempo at the moment. Let's get a, let's get a sprint. And we'll do shielded stance. Make sure that we're okay. Uh, so we're missing one SRM4, one King David Gauss rifle because of losing that uh, fourth suit. If we're lucky, we might be able to injure a leg here. LRM ammo destroyed, but explosion contained from case. Um, still, it's pretty good. Unsteady. Nearly a knockdown. Oh, jeez. <laughs> oh, man. The 50% damage resistant uh, pilot ability just saved that entire thing. I mean, wow. If not, we probably would have lost two of those suits. Uh, fortunately, now, though, we can do another greedy shot. Uh, with our Marauder without too much trouble. So, let's shoot through. Unfortunately, I didn't have anything that could deal uh, stability damage, so I'm going to try there. And luckily, he's not finishing off our battle armor. If they get too much closer, we should be able to do a swarm attack, which would be highly entertaining, if not effective. But, uh, no dice on that at the moment. Let's get even closer. Actually, can I get the swarm attack? No, I'm, I think I'm one tile away. Our SRM4s are now offline, so we're limited to the King David Gausses, um, at least for this group, which is still useful because I can pop a precision strike and slow that motor down to moving on four. That looks like only one hit, but that's okay. Let's come up here with the other phalanx armor. Okay, I can actually get a rear shot, but not on the one that I want the rear shot on, because we've damaged the rear arc of that Marauder, but not the Crusader. 
Um, let's turn on all of these just to try and get the kill if we can. Also slowing the Crusader down to five. Okay, very nice. I mean, that's a lot of firepower coming in from uh, from an unexpected source, shall we say. Crusader gets a knockdown. Okay. Engine destroyed. Hey, that's a kill. Our battle armor got a kill. I mean, was it heavily assisted? Yes. But a kill is a kill is a kill. All world around. Um, our urban mechs are going to have to work together with the dervish to try and finish off this marauder. I'd like to do it before the reinforcing lines can get too much additional fire on us. That was definitely a good shot. But let's see what the other urban, urban mech can do to follow it up. Okay, give me something good, please. Let's see. 90 left and... Yeah, okay, we might rip off a left torso, but we might probably not be able to kill it. With this. Okay, we didn't even hit the left torso. That's unfortunate. Uh, but two of those, at least, pounded into the, that rear CT, so I mean, that gives us something to work with. Um, it's pumping around this way. And precision strike again. Actually, is there any benefit? Do we actually get an accuracy bonus? No, we don't. So we're going to instead pop vigilance, get him moving on seven in the next turn. And that's what I wanted to see. Very nice. Okay, so our first uh, enemy lance is completely off the battlefield. Very nice. Uh, we can get Ridge Hounds moving now, but I want to wait. So generally when the AI can't see you, they will Instead of reserving, they will oftentimes rush toward you, like that guy is doing, to try and get some sort of visual contact and get guns on target. Which, I mean, it makes sense. It's what I would uh, program them to do as well. And it's what, I, it's what we it's what we do when we don't even have any programming of our, of our own. Um, because it's, you know, we have to close the enemy in order to fight them. Uh, but it does look like they're coming up this way. There's a 40-tonner, 55-tonner. Okay, so it is a lighter lance than what we were fighting previously, which is... Somewhat reassuring, I think the damage battle armor is pretty much out of the fight at this point. Uh, not really anything we can do about that, uh, unless we want to risk just killing the pilot with paper-thin remnants of uh, already very small battle armor protection. But uh, I'd rather not. <laughs> I don't know about you. I'd, I'd rather keep my pilot alive. Um, I know the other one was the one who actually got the kill, but we got some good work out of both suits, I'd say. I will look into increasing the SRM ammunition trays, but I'm not entirely sure how to do that without sacrificing too much more protection, which I think is also sorely lacking. Um, now, there is a stealth suit that I'm curious to try. I think it did have jump jets. Uh, probably be a worthwhile investment for us. We're going to hide on the ridge here because, uh, okay, so we have improved center, center section, 50 tonner, 255 tonners, and the 40 tonner Chimera. Um, so a solid medium lance. Let's go ahead and get a sensor lock, drop that Chimera down from four pips to two. Um, we could let the others go. I think we're going to, I want to potentially use a second uh, sensor lock on that Chimera before we really start targeting him. And the trebuchet on the hill is well positioned. Finally getting the first bit of damage on our Irby Lamb. Not the end of the world. Not the end of the world. I'm feeling okay. <laughs> yeah, we're feeling okay. So, um, I don't know, because our Marauder has taken a fair bit of damage as well. I think it might be a good idea to keep him somewhat secluded. So, let's just move up a little bit. Enough to get the... Sensor lock on the Chimera. That thing's going from four evasion pips to zero in between his own turns. It's not exactly going to be a comforting sensation. Something... okay. That's that large laser we saw earlier. This could be any number of mechs because the sheer variety of loadouts uh, in the BTA-3062 is just gigantic. Looks like they're outside of our range. Mm. Okay, that's certainly a limiting factor we'll have to be aware of for the battle armors. Um, do you want to be inside of my SRM 6 range? So let's do this. Lead the charge with Centurion. I mean, that's thematic anyway. We're going to go back to slug rounds for right now, try and punch a hole in this guy. 
had a I've had a Chimera before as one of my starting mechs um, in this mod just because it is a 40 ton. It's basically like the Hermes 2 sort of roll. Um, ouch, that was a PPC. It, it's not. So I, I think I tend to prefer the Hermes 2, but this build is. This build's nice. Um, I've never rolled one with the MRM 20 off the start, which it might be. Uh, a more advanced build than is allowable, uh, shall we say, to get things kicking. I mean, you can do a lot with that. The large laser is good at uh, drilling through armor. MRM is excellent follow-up for crit seeking. It's a very capable build. Um, and if we got the Chimera, I'd probably well, keep it roughly that way. Uh, that risks when we fire this a little bit less so. We are cooling down. Well, we need to cool down a little bit, so let's turn off the SRM. Four. Let's just shoot him with two medium lasers. Okay, we do have uh, structure exposed on the camera. Very nice. Should be able to follow that up pretty early on on the next turn. Um, so Chancellor is just going to hide up here. I don't even want them to have vision. I don't want them shooting at this guy. I want no harm coming to that uh, brave little battle armor. And the other one we're gonna have to try to get within range, but what we needed on this thing was jump jets. We could jump right over the right over the uh, cliff edge there, and start moving toward. Which, yeah, we don't have a shot. At this guy. Okay, let's get him moving. At least get him outside of the most obvious line of sight for the AI. Um, can get up and around behind that trebuchet. So I think I'm going to. It's one of those mechs. It might be lightly enough armored uh, on its rear arc. Uh, like that archer we took out the other day, that we could potentially get a kill. So let's see. 25, 25, 35. That's what I like to see. Please die. No. Um, I think we hit him in his arm. Yeah. Oh, God. If we put 52 points of damage anywhere here, we would have been halfway through his internal structure. Urf, that is aggravating. Okay. Um, Pop shielded stance again, just because I don't want you to... Suffer. Wait, do you guys have... Oh no, that's a battle claw. I thought they had a sensor lock. I was very confused. Um, Alright, so let's see. Where is that structure exposed? That's on the left-hand side. So what we're going to do is we're going to sprint up here. We'll get a height elevation bonus. Precision strike to slow you down. Moving on six, and... Give me that torso. Nope. Unable to take that down. Now... Uh, they might move the Chimera first, it's what I would do. Yep, yeah, okay, and they did. But the reason I slowed them down to six was because that wasn't a guarantee, and if they didn't, then we would have been in excellent shape to take him out. Even as it stands right now, I think this is probably the move that we want to do. And then we'll switch over the LBX ADC-10 to Cluster, Precision Strike, fire away. Okay, not enough, not enough. Better evasion on that Chimera than I gave him credit for, but we do actually get a Panic Pilot Eject. So down to three enemy mechs remaining, one with heavily damaged rear arc and randomly heavily damaged left arm because reasons. That, you know, it would actually take skill. I mean, he's straight up behind that mech and he goes, I'm gonna land some shots on the arm. <laughs> oh man, uh, pilots are always overachievers in the worst possible of ways, I suppose. Dervish is going to come up here as well, pop Battle Lord should give us good enough accuracy to make this a viable option. Yeah, lots of good damage coming down. Um, now the SRM, the, those uh, short range missiles are doing additional damage because of Battle Lord, it does increase accuracy, but it, well, most importantly, increases uh, damage as well. So damage 8 missiles become damage 10 missiles. Double binary laser, double ER medium, let's see what we can do. One, two, three. Three out of four is not bad. Uh, of course, the binary lasers, without significant damage resistance in their way, do deal as uh, much as 70 damage in a single shot. Better than a PPC, even, so. Um, I think we actually had a bit of a redundant shot there, so we landed both the binary lasers. But I think what happened is we hit both the left arm and the left torso. Force killing the left torso also kills the left arm, but not if the shots happen simultaneously, right? So, had that left torso already been gone and we rolled a hit, we would have rolled a different hit location 
Uh, that would have actually given us some long-term damage. Um, Marauder takes another PPC shot, and we really need to check on this thing's CT, because if that was a shot to the CT, we're in trouble, and it was. 26 armor left. We need to move the Marauder out of danger. Um, and I'm not really sure the best way to do that at this point, so what we're going to do, we're going to move the Urban Mech up and around, and give me a rear arc shot on that trebuchet. I want this thing dead. One less thing to shoot us, we can manage it. There's lots of red numbers, but not quite enough of them. So we'll have to follow up with the Irby Lamb. Which I really wanted to get over and start shooting at those other mechs over there. But better to get the kill instead of effectively splitting fire and leaving enemy guns on the board. So please, shoot this guy in the rear arc this time. No? Those streaks, man, they just cannot roll the hit locations I want them to. Yeah, that's disappointing. Okay, so back to the battle armor. Let's see, can I get any shots? No, but I could if I made the mistake. Block my own marauder. Uh, okay, let's just do that. Um, race with Chancellor as well. And here they're moving on six. That'll be the Griffin. Yep, race for it. Ah, jeez. Another accidental shot to the other unit of battle armor just takes somebody out. I think I'd learn my lesson for that eventually, but it seems like the answer is no. Um, so we're in positioning. My expectation of killing that trebuchet has denied me an opportunity to get a rear arc shot on it uh, with the dervish. What we're probably going to want to do is come up here. No sense shooting at the front of the trebuchet, but there is good purpose shooting at the front of this griffin. Uh, we're going to turn back to cluster. Sorry, turn back to slug. That is structure exposed. Decent damage. Not horrible. Okay, so a little bit of tension. We do have to make sure that we don't lose our own mech. Oh, jeez. You know what? We're going right through the side. Give me a side. Facing Alpha Strike in the sky. Down, please. Down, please. Left torso killed. Panicked and steady. I think we killed both. No, only the one arm. So the reason I did that is because we'd worked through enough the internal structure that that wasn't a completely wasted shot. But this trebuchet is proving to be resistant beyond measure. Um, really beyond all sort of expectation for. A 50 ton mech usually overlooked as decidedly mediocre. That's uh, most, if not all, things. So the Marauder is just going to retreat, uh, unfortunately taking its guns off the table on our own side right now, um, without actually dying, but 20 structure left, we can't risk that. I mean, our Marauder has a double heat sink kit in there that I can't replace. If it takes a crit, it's gone. Uh, well, I mean, I could replace it. It cost me 1.8 million C-bills. So I'd really rather not, if that's all right. <laughs> Well, even if it does slow things down for us just a little bit, um, let's come up here. The urban mech, uh, making use of that full torso twist again. Please kill this guy. Okay, finally. Finally, finally. Man, that trebuchet is down. We will get a nice payday for this. Um, I'm not really sure what the maintenance costs will be uh, for the battle armor. We have lost one of the suits in each, I imagine, that is some high cost, but the suit of four itself only cost us about 600,000 sea bills to field. Um, so I would hope it would be a small fraction of that, but not even, say, a quarter. <laughs> just replacing it. Oh, this guy has a double heat sink kit. It's a fancy griffin. Hey, ERPPC. I wouldn't have guessed that based off of his loadout. I mean, I guess maybe, but could have fooled me. Uh, we're gonna come up here. And this is why I was moving these guys forward at all, um, although that was probably a bad decision in hindsight. Let's see if we can get a kill on the Griffin. 1, 2, 3. Let's mess around. Not enough, but, I mean, each one of those King David uh, Gauss rifles pounded into structure, so we did a fair amount of damage to that center torso. Keep in mind, Griffins have Griffin rugged, so we did have a lot that we had to work through there. Um. Okay, let's see what I got. Griffin 3M. Oh, that's not good. 
Okay, so the Phalanx Battle Armor actually survives that. It seems like they're pretty well suited to take anything other than a large autocannon shell or a PPC, but even then, I think they actually deal with those better than you might expect, and here's why. Um, if I were to hit a mech with a Gauss Rifle and it kills a hit location, the damage travels inward. All right, so if I... actually, let's, let's go ahead and say an AC-20, so 100 points of damage. If I jam that into a mech, um, and let's say it rips off the leg, it'll also deal damage up that side of the mech as well. If I do enough to kill an arm, I'll also damage the um, side torso on the same side. But, for those battle armors where it's isolated, I can hit uh, one of those guys with an AC-20 shell, and it'll kill that unit, but it won't kill the rest of the battle armors, it won't travel through. So there is actually some damage mitigation that happens just by virtue of overkill is counted against mechs and it's not counted uh, the same way against battle armor, uh, which can, you know, that's that's a perk. Don't let anyone tell you it's not. Um, because that griffin has already moved and I want it dead, I don't care if it's from a um, punch out or from whatever, we're going to shoot in here, missing both binary lasers unfortunately, and I think we should be able to kill this guy with the Irby Lamb. Um, who really just does disproportionate work. Basically every drop is pretty great. I would field another one if I had it. If I can find another one, we will field it. So, that's the second lance down, thankfully. We'll have to do a little bit of mech bay repairs for those two pieces of battle armor before they'll take the field again, but um, that's how, how it goes, I suppose. Thank you all for hanging around, and we'll see you again real soon.